Welcome inside the Unified Media Lab for this week's edition of Sportslink's Sports Link Live presented by Stoops Buick GMC. This week we have outside hitter for the women's volleyball team Brooklyn Goodsell and head coach Kelly Miller. Thank you for joining us this week. You come off of a weekend where you actually unfortunately lost two matches in five sets. What kind of takeaways, even with those heart aching losses, can you take away moving forward for the rest of the Mid-American Conference season? Yeah, I think there's a ton we can take away. Um, we played really, really good defense all weekend. Our passing is coming along, um, made all kinds of plays defensively. So it's good to see that our ball control is continuing to play well, continuing to get better each week. Um, I think Ellie Dunn, she really had a, a career night on Friday night. Um, is one of the best matches that she's played in quite some time. And so if she can continue to do that, have that kind of production um, in future matches, you know, that, that's going to be huge. And I think, you know, even when you don't win them all, the more experience that we're getting in five setters and, and just playing volleyball, we're going to learn from, we're going we're gonna to grow from. Um, and so, yeah, they were heartbreaks, and there's things that we're going to go back and, and work on this week in practice, but um, there's a ton of good things that came out of this weekend as well. You mentioned Ellie Dunn. She had a career-high 22 kills yeah. in the match against Kent State and then also had a good performance against Ohio, as did Brooklyn. You had 17 kills and then 13 against Ohio. What do you feel like this outside hitter position with you, Ellie, Sabrina, all just gelling together throughout this season? Um, I think we're doing a lot of good work. Um, especially because our middles are holding a lot of blockers, are getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks um, and just good looks at our blocker and hitting like great shots. We're not always just trying to like kill the ball every time. We're trying to like strategically be low error and play better every week. And coach, you mentioned how slow starts may be plagued um, you guys throughout this weekend just with the slow start against Kent State and Ohio. What as a coach can you do to prevent those slow starts? It's a great question. Um, you know, I went back and I've been studying the film. Um, and you know, the funny thing is, we actually right out the gate don't get off to that slow start. You know, we were hanging with people till about point ten, and then just continue to get stuck in a certain rotation. So, you know, I don't think that's necessarily anything different with training that we need to do. Um, the biggest thing is just eliminating runs of points. And so when we get in trouble is we can't get out of a rotation. We get stuck in a certain rotation. And it's different every time. It's not the same rotation. And so I think it's just a matter of um, you know, us being a little bit more strategic, of play calling in those situations. Um, but again, I think it's just a toughness piece. So from our ball control standpoint, you know, when we're facing a tough server, just to keep laying it in there, that's tough. That's a tough challenge to ask people to do. Um, but again, that's another step in our process. And if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to win those close ones, you're going to have to, to pass when you're under pressure. And I think, um, you know, that's something we're just going to have to continue working on. There's no special formula to it. There's no real different thing that we can do in practice except keep getting better. I think that's it. And we talked about the outside hitter position. Ellie Dunn was obviously a bright spot over mm -hmm. this weekend. She had 35 kills among those 10 sets that you ended up playing. Why, if Ellie gets going, can this team be so lethal on the outside? Because you have Brooklyn, who has already established herself as one of the best hitters in the Mid-American Conference, what does Ellie add to that, uh, that equation? Yeah, the, the more people that we can get consistently going, the better. So that way, defense aren't able to just gang up on one side or the other. So, you know, if we have Brooklyn at the right side pin, we have Ellie going at the left side pin, or Sabrina at the left side pin, it enables us to spread our offense, which then in turn gives them so many more hitting opportunities where they're not facing double blocks every time. Um, it keeps the defense on their toes. So the more offensive production that we can get, um, whether it's Ellie or a middle or whoever, the better that makes us just from defense not being able to make us so vanilla. Um, if we can continue to mix up things, hit different shots, set different people, um, it just becomes really hard to defend us. Brooklyn, you had 30 kills among those 10 sets, so you didn't play bad yourself. Obviously, the outside hitters were a big part in this weekend's matches. What do you feel like you've grown? How do you feel like you've grown uh, from the start of the season to more of that player that can get double-digit kills anytime she steps out on the floor? Um, I think a big thing is just confidence in the people around us. So. Uh, at the beginning, we weren't making as many plays defensively, and now we are. Our ball control is great. Um, we've been playing really well. Um, 
and our like the other hitters just putting the ball away. So I know like if they send me the ball, what I have the confidence to get that point, that they have the confidence in me to get that point, and just hitting smart shots. And and coach, what kind of growth have you seen from Brooklyn this season throughout throughout the season to become more of that dominant hitter? Yeah, I think a big thing that Brooke does is she's really versatile. So she doesn't just have to hit at the right side pin. Um, you know, we moved around to hit first tempo. She can hit slides. She hits out of the back row. Um, she hits two ball. So just having a variety of sets that's available to her. So if one thing's not working, she's got plan B, we've got plan C. And, um, you know, she's comfortable hitting a, a variety of sets, which then makes it in turn difficult to defend because you can't get into a rhythm. You know, we're trying to keep defenses off balance. And with her ability to be able to run different sets, run different plays, um, just opens up more options for her and it opens up our offense to be able to work around that. Another bright spot this weekend was just the consistency and the overall uh, variety of the offense against Ohio. You had five players in double digit kill yeah. marks. That included Sabrina, Brooklyn, Ellie Dunn, the outside hitters that we talked about, but also the middle hitters in Avery DeVoe and Emily Holland. How does that help a team to have so much consistency on the offensive end? I mean, it's huge. I think. You know, that is one area that we've been consistently a little bit under par is, is our offense coming out of the middle. And at times, you know, we'll have one or one of them that are playing really well. And it, Sydney Van Beek's been in that fold as well. Um, but we haven't consistently had middles performing and getting double digit kills. And it's hard to say um, that you're going to have five people in double digit kills. Not. That's, that's rare. Um, but if they can just give consistent production, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a certain number of kills, but just being consistent threat allows us to, to run different things, to have different options offensively. Um, and this weekend you saw, you know, even though we came up short against Ohio, we were right there. And so when you, know, when you have three match points, um, it's just a 50-50 chance if we're going to get that or not. And I think you know, we were in a position to win it, just came up short, but they put us in a position to be able to win. In Brooklyn, establishing yourself as really the outside hitter or the go-to attacker on this team, how does that ease the pressure off of you having so much variety on the offensive side? Um, it's great because like it's not there's like our times when we get stuck in a rotation, but it's not that the hitters are stuck hitting a certain thing because even if our ball control isn't perfect, that we can still run different plays, hit different things. Um, and it's not just me, like there's other people that can come in and hit two balls, there's other people that can hit slides. So it really like balances us out. And we're talking about all these players that are playing so well in these past matches and almost all of them are underclassmen, not, mm -hmm. not ex excluding Sabrina Magnaporo, who's a, a junior, but how exciting is that to have all these young players coming up and developing over this season and really carrying this team moving forward? You know, I think it's it's really important and it, it was a nice transition with also myself being in my first year that we just kind of had a clean slate with everything and um, you know it just so happened that we were really freshmen and sophomore dominant and those are the people that um, have just continued to mesh the best and, and, and give us the lineup that we had um, but it, it's great for the future I mean we're I've seen us grow so much just from our first weekend tournament to now I feel like we're gonna have still more growth um, from now until the MAC tournament time and then in the future um, you know we're going to continue to to bring in recruits and we're going to continue to compete and I think that's the best thing that you know these freshmen and sophomores are now understanding how hard you have to compete um, and that you have an opportunity and you know the people that are going to help us the people that are going to play and these guys have just um, really played well and even Sabrina you know, she didn't get to play last year with her shoulder injury, so technically she's just in her second year of playing on the court. Um, and so it just takes time to get experience out there, to get confident in different situations, to get confident in attacking in a five-setter. Um, you know, different situations, the more you can get out there and do it, um, the better. And now that they're getting this experience early, that's only going to help them and help our program for years to come. And two players we haven't even mentioned are the two freshmen that have played in every single set this season and Kate Avila and Amber Seaman that two pivotal roles on a volleyball team in the libero and the setter position how have you seen them grow over their freshman year I think you know for Amber she had such a benefit of being able to come in um, the last spring semester train with us the semester early um, and it just got her comfortable 
running our offense, get her comfortable with our hitters. And it still takes time once, you know, the season's a little bit different pressure than when you're just training in the spring. But um, her maturity, her ability to maintain her her focus, to stay relaxed, you know, it's something when she feels a lot of pressure, you know, she's somebody that puts a lot of pressure on herself. Um, but I think over time she's continued to mature, feel more comfortable in that role. Kate Avila, oh, she's somebody that's just a workhorse and I think for her, um, you know, from day one she was going to give it her all and she puts all of her focus into everything that she does and so, you know, I don't think it was a surprise to anybody that she took over that libero role because she just stays locked in. She does her job every night um, and invokes confidence in her teammates. And you know that that's really tough as a freshman for both those guys to do that. But um, they've came out and, and done everything we could have asked. And obviously, the setter position is big for an outside hitter because you're you're receiving passes every single play from her. Mm -hmm. How have you, how has your relationship grown with Amber over the season? Because it takes some adjustment time to get used to a new setter like that. Um, I actually really enjoy playing with Amber. Um, she's a very fiery player and she's very passionate about what she's doing and although there are a few times where I have to tell her to calm down, um, she takes every single ball seriously. Like if she makes a bad play, she is the first person to be in there covering or she's the first person to make sure the next ball is better and it's just she's trying to learn every single play. And taking over this program from uh, really a coaching legend among the Ball State program and Steve Shondell. What type of things um, did you learn from him that moving forward you've, you've adapted and, and learned for uh, this season as your first year in a head coach position? I was really fortunate to be able to work under Steve for the last six years. And I think with him, he, he's just so good at um, developing relationships with his players so that he can understand, you know, what do they need in that moment? What do they need from a training standpoint? What do we need? Do we need to take a day off? You know, just having um, that relationship with your players so that they know that you care about them. You know that you're, you're in it for more than just winning games. I think that's really important. That was something that Steve was huge on, and I, I learned a ton from that, um, as well as, you know, just the pride of, of being at Ball State. I think, you know, he's a long time Muncie guy, long time Ball State alumnus and, um, you know, it, it's important. Volleyball is important here and it's not something that everyone gets to experience when they go to play at college, but when you're at Ball State, it's something that's important and it's respected and I think, um, you know, making sure every player understands that and, and feels special playing on our program and I learned that from Steve and I'll continue to develop that tradition with every team that I have here on out. In Brooklyn, from a player's perspective, adjusting from Steve Shondell to Kelly Miller, I know she was an assistant coach uh, on this team, so has the transition been easier uh, because she was within the program and how has that tr uh, transition been from a player's perspective? Um, the transition has actually been really smooth um, because in the spring Kelly took over basically as the head coach even though like right when Steve retired so we've had her and I mean she's had the whole mindset the same like even when she was the assistant coach it's you work hard you compete and you go play so if you're putting up numbers or if you're playing well you're going to play so uh, I don't really think that there was much of a transition it's it's been pretty steady. And not everything was easy to start out your oh, coaching yeah. career at Ball State. <laughs> <laughs> you guys started out 0-9, yeah. but what, yeah. what does that say about this program, about these girls on this team, to fight back from that 0-9 start with a first-year head coach? You know, it, it takes a lot to fight back. What does that say about this team and your, your coaching as well? You know, it, it was tough for those first nine matches. You know, it was something um, that required a lot of patience, and I think – the, the number one thing that, that was helped me to get through it and I think helped our team is they, every single person that was involved in our program, from the girls, the staff, you know, athletic training, everybody, just really bought into what we were doing. And we understood it wasn't about winning that match that night. It's about getting better so that we can win when it matters, which is MAC tournament time. So it's about getting better every day. Um, and it's, I think what helped was, you know, even when we were losing those early, we saw improvement every time. And you know, the best thing that the girls did for me was be patient and continue to trust in the process. And you know, it would have been easy just to say, forget it, you know, we can't win, we can't do this. And they didn't do that one time. Every day we came in and worked, every match we took seriously, we learned from. Um, and now we're starting to, to have that payoff. But I think 
you know, when you're in the rough, it's hard to maintain that focus and to stay patient, but that's exactly what the girls did. They stayed patient, they trusted the process, you know, they knew there's a bigger picture. And, um, you know, now we're starting to see some fruits of that and hopefully continue to see more fruits of that. But um, I, I'm just really, really pleased with how they stayed the course. They believed in me, they believed in what we were doing. Um, and now it's starting to pay off. In Brooklyn, with a younger team, starting off 0-9, it has to be tough and it has to be a, something where a leader has to step up. Did you find yourself in that leader role and, and stepping up and how, how did you encourage this team through that tough start? Yeah, uh, Sabrina Mangapur and I definitely um, try to take the lead and improve our team and just have us think about it doesn't matter right now. We need to get better right now. Um, results aren't what we're worried about. Um, it's more down the road, like she said, MAC tournament time. Um, you don't want to peak too early, so obviously we did not peak early. Um, yeah. But uh, it's definitely about the end result down the road, not the end result right now. What type of things has this team done throughout the season to grow both on the court and off the court? Um, I would say our defense and our ball control has made huge strides. Um, beginning of the year, we'd lose close matches, and now we have super long rallies, and we win those points, and we win those matches, and um, I think that's something that's huge. What about off the court? What does this team do to gel together and become more of a team? Um, I definitely think competing in practice is something that we do that, like, brings us together, but it also makes us so much better because like, so when we start practice, the first thing we do is we do some sort of drill where we compete. And so that like when we get into a game, we instantly start competing. Um, and it's not a, oh, we need to focus in now or oh, we need to like, like pay more attention. It's we're ready to go right off the bat. And Coach Brooklyn and Ellie Dunn were both big recruits coming out of high school. Uh, Brooklyn was a first team All-American coming out of high school, Ellie Dunn was an honorable mention All-American. What type of things does that say about this underclassmen, underclass, underclassmen on this team that have come up, the freshmen that are competing this year and the sophomores that are competing this year, and how excited does that make you moving forward with the type of talent that you guys have? I think, you know, in order to compete in our league, in the Mid-American Conference there, we're, we're playing tough teams night in and night out, so we have to make sure that we're recruiting those top caliber athletes so that we can stay in the hunt. And I think, um, you know, we're really fortunate that Brooklyn's class, 2015 class, um, has made a major impact thus far. Um, and it's our goal as a staff and our program is to make sure that each class is going to have that same impact because, um, you know, you let up for one year, that can come back to haunt you. And I think in our league, it's so tough and it's just getting better and better. So we have to make sure that we're maintaining and getting, getting the best recruits possible that are gonna fit our system, that are gonna buy into what we believe in. Cause it's not just about, you know, having the best talent. You've gotta have the talent, but you also have to believe in what we're doing. And you know, that's that chemistry piece that's just as important as the skills that you're performing. And so I think finding that mesh of what works for our program, finding that mesh of people that buy into what we're doing. Um, it just makes for a really exciting um, future. And I think, you know, we have, we have nothing to, but good things to come in the future. And Brooklyn, you mentioned your high school success out of Cory Area High School in Pennsylvania. Why Ball State when you, when you come from, I looked it up on Google Maps, <laughs> six and a half hours away, why Ball State uh, to make your decision? Um, volleyball was the ultimate thing. I mean, this, this school is great, and I actually love where I'm at, and I love the school and everything, but the environment and the culture that Steve and Kelly and the coaching staff had set, um, even before I got here, um, was just a huge impact. Like, my sophomore year, I came and I visited, and I was like, I like it. I want to come here. I want to be a part of this culture. I'm buying in. I want to play. And You've, you played under your father uh, at Cory Area High School. What type yes. of challenges or advantages did that, did that present through your high school days? And what type of um, advice did he give you to make you the player that you are today? Um, it definitely made me a lot tougher. Um, playing for your parents is definitely something that is hard, but it definitely pays off in the end. Like while you're there, you're like, oh my gosh, I hate it. But afterwards, you look back and you go, like, I learned so much. Like I learned so much about the game, I learned so much about life, and it's just, it's not just life lessons; it's things that like I can apply to my future. And we've talked about this young class, Coach. What what is the next step 
for this young class. You've, we've talked about the record. We're 4-4 four and four in the Mid-American Conference. What does this group need to do to take that next step? Well, I told them on Monday when we had our meetings, you know, we're going in the second half of the MAC season, and we're no longer inexperienced. So we, we can no longer say we're just a group of freshmen and sophomores. That, that's over. You know, we have to, to move past that idea and figure out, um, you know, we're close. Now how do we win them? Um, and so no more moral victories kind of at this point in time. We have experience. We've played in plenty of matches. We know what we're doing. And now it's time to get over that hump. And so um, my, my, my plan is just, you know, to keep things fresh and practice. So, you know, add in some different types of scrimmaging, do some different things so that, you know, we're never getting comfortable where we're at. Yeah, we've improved. Yes, we've won matches, but we're not where we need to be. And so I think you, we have to keep you know, teams, your team uncomfortable. And that's a good thing. That's how we grow. That's how we get better. Um, and especially, you know, we have with a young group, they're up for anything. You know, we're ready to go. We're going to, they love playing games. They love doing this. And anything I throw at them, um, you know, they don't know any other way. So let's do it. Let's do it this way. Let's see if this works. And um, I think you know, moving forward, the biggest step is going to be it's no longer, all right, well, except we didn't quite make it. Now let's make it. Now let's, let's take that next step. You know, we're figuring out why we didn't win those close ones. Now let's make the adjustments and win them um, so that we can prepare ourselves for the best case um, going into the tournament and know we're going to make ourselves in a position to win and then go do it. Why can this team achieve these goals that you set out at the start of the year and win the Mid-American Conference Tournament? No, I, I, my, my thought with that is why not our team? You know, I think you have to have ball control to win a championship, serving, passing, and defense. Um, we've, we've been one of the, the top passing teams consistently. Um, defensively, we've continued to improve. That's a harder stat to measure um, necessarily on paper, but we're making plays. We're extending rallies. We're keeping ourselves alive. Um, serving, we, that's where we talk about we have to continue to make improvements. Teams um, right now are serving a little tougher than us, so we've got to continue to improve in that aspect moving forward. Um, but offensively, we've got enough people that, it, that can get a kill. You know, we're, we're running a nice offense. Now it's just putting it together at the right time. So we've seen it all work um, at different times, sometimes together, but other times, you know, bits and pieces. So if we can just combine those to all working at once, then why not us? Why not us? Brooklyn, what are your thoughts on that aspect? Why can this team, you've been around the team, why can this team win the Mid-American Conference Tournament? Um, we're all bought into the process. So we've talked about the process a long time, um, especially at the beginning, especially when we were 0-9. And we were like, we stick with this process. We are going to get better. We are going to win games, and it's going to work out. Um, that and we have all the tools we need. We have a good offense. We can pass the ball. We have ball control. We play good defense, um, it's just a matter of getting better and crisper at those at what we need to do. Once again with SportsLink Live, I'm Corey Stace alongside outside hitter Brooklyn Goodsell and head coach Kelly Miller. Moving forward to this weekend, you have Bowling Green and Miami of Ohio both on the road. Um, you've, you've had general success on the road so far in the Mid-American Conference. What's, what are the keys heading into this weekend's set of games with two tough opponents over 700 winning percentage? I think it's the same as if it was another match. It's make sure that we do everything we can in practice to prepare ourselves. So we, we do the reps to perfection. You know, we, we get everything out of the scanning report so that we're prepped and ready to go. And we go in and attack the match. I don't think it matters if you're playing the worst team or the first place team. You've got to attack every match the same and have confidence in what you're doing. If, if we prepare well, um, we know the scouting report, and then you just go execute. I think it's no different depending if you're playing on the road, at home versus the first place team or not. It's all about if, if we're going to execute. And so you have to have confidence that you've prepared. You have to put in the work and then go do it. And I think you know, that will be my same plan um, this weekend. It would be any other is we got to do the work, prepare, and then go execute. And Brooklyn, as a team leader on this team, how do you prepare your team to get ready for this weekend? Uh, I don't think anything changes. If anything, like we ha always have the mindset to get better. We always have the mindset to work hard. So, I mean, just showing up and playing the game. All right, that's all we have from SportsLink Live for this, this week's edition every week at 12.30 p.m. 
Once again, we thank Brooklyn Goodsell outside hitter for women's volleyball team and head coach Kelly Miller. That's all we have. I'm signing off Corey Stace from the Unified Media Lab. We'll be back once again next week at 1230 for SportsLink Live.